The readings will now be given by Dave from Florida. I will read from the Bible. Psalms. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Romans Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, he must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thought. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Ephesians that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the work of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, far above all principality 
and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and from Miscellaneous Writings by Mary Baker Eddy. In science, man is governed by God, divine principle. God governs all that is real, harmonious, and eternal, and his power is neither animal nor human. The law of God is the law of spirit, a moral and spiritual force of immortal and divine mind. The so-called law of matter is an immoral force of erring mortal mind, alias the minds of mortals. This so-called force, or law, at work in nature as a power, prohibition, or license, is cruel and merciless. It punishes the innocent and repays our best deeds with sacrifice and suffering. It is a code whose modes trifle with joy and lead to immediate or ultimate death. It fosters suspicion where confidence is due, fear where courage is requisite, reliance where there should be avoidance, a belief in safety where there is most danger. Our master called it a murderer from the beginning. Electricity governed by this so-called law sparkles on the clouds and strikes down the hoary saint. Floods swallow up home and households, and childhood, age, and manhood go down in the death-dealing wave. Earthquakes engulf cities, churches, schools, and mortals. Cyclones kill and destroy, desolating the green earth. This pitiless power smites with disease the good Samaritan ministering to his neighbor's need. Even the chamber where the good man surrenders to death is not exempt from this law. Smoothing the pillow of pain may infect you with smallpox, according to this lawless law, which dooms man to die for loving his neighbor as himself. When Christ has said that love is the fulfilling of the law, our great ensample, Jesus of Nazareth, met and abolished this unrelenting false claim of matter with the righteous scorn and power of spirit. When through mind he restored sight to the blind, he figuratively and literally spat upon matter, and, anointing the wounded spirit with the great truth that God is all, he demonstrated the healing power and supremacy of the law of life and love. In the spiritual genesis of creation, all law was vested in the lawgiver who was a law to himself. In divine science, God is one and all, and governing himself, he governs the universe. This is the law of creation. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. And that infinite mind governs all things. On this infinite principle of freedom, God named himself I Am. Error, or Adam, might give names to itself and call mind by the name of matter. But error could neither name nor demonstrate spirit. The name I Am indicated no personality that could be paralleled with it. But it did declare a mighty individuality. Even the everlasting Father as infinite consciousness, ever-presence, omnipotence, as all law, life, truth, and love. God's interpretation of himself furnishes man 
with the only suitable or true idea of him. And the divine definition of deity differs essentially from the human. It interprets the law of spirit, not of matter. It explains the eternal dynamics of being and shows that nature and man are as harmonious today as in the beginning, when all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made. Whatever appears to be law, but partakes not of the nature of God, is not law, but is what Jesus declared it, a liar and the father of it. God is the law of life, not of death of health, not of sickness, of good, not of evil. It is this infinitude and oneness of good that silences the supposition that evil is a claimant or a claim. The consciousness of good has no consciousness or knowledge of evil. And evil is not a quality to be known or eliminated by good while iniquity, too evil to conceive of good as being unlike itself, declares that God knows iniquity. When the lawgiver was the only law of creation, freedom reigned and was the heritage of man. But this freedom was the moral power of good, not of evil. It was divine science in which God is supreme and the only law of being. In this eternal harmony of science, man is not fallen. He is governed in the same rhythm that the scripture describes when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. The so-called laws of matter and of medical science have never made mortals whole, harmonious and immortal. Man is harmonious when governed by soul. <laughs>